Hello students, in the last session we have seen the definition of vector spaces. Now in today's session we will see how to see, we will see an example of vector space. Now in order to prove any set to be a vector space, we have to check all the 10 property. We have to check one by one and that should be satisfied by that particular set. Let's take this example. Prove that the set S equal to the set is of the form x comma 3x where x belongs to your real numbers under the operation addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space over real numbers. We have to prove this to be a vector space. So what we will do, we will satisfy one, all the 10 properties one by one. Alright. Let's take for that we need two, we need three elements belonging to that particular set. So let's take u, v and w. Since these are belonging to the set, so they should be of the form x comma 3x. Since x is a variable, you can change the variables according to yourself. So I am taking the first u equal to x1 comma 3x1, v equal to x2 comma 3x2, w equal to x3 comma 3x3 belonging to the set S and p and q are your scalars belonging to the real numbers. Now let's satisfy all the properties one by one. Let's check them. The first is the closure property of addition u plus v. What does the closure property say? It says that any two elements belonging to that particular set their addition should also belong to that particular set. Alright, so let's do the addition and check whether it belongs to the set or not. u plus v equal to, let's set, substitute u and v there itself. Now we have to do addition of both of them. Alright, what we will do, we'll add the first coordinate with the first coordinate. So x1 plus x2, then comma, and then second coordinate with the second coordinate. That is 3x1 plus 3x2. Now what we have to do, if you observe the second coordinate 3x1 plus 3x2, there we have 3 common in between. So I am going to take 3 common. So 3 and in bracket I have x1 plus x2. Now this is the final addition of u plus v. Now we have to check whether this belongs to our set S. In order to belong to the set S, what we want? We want that to be of the form x comma 3x. Just I told you that x is a variable, it can be changed to anything. But in order to be of this form, the first coordinate should be x and the second coordinate should be 3 multiplied with that same first coordinate. So in the first coordinate, I have x1 plus x2, comma 3 into again x1 plus x2. So I can say that this belongs to the set S and hence the closure property is satisfied. We'll move to the next property, commutativity. What does your commutativity property say? It says that if I have addition of two elements u plus v, they will always be equal to v plus u. Which means even if we rearrange both of the elements, still I am going to get the same answer. Let's check the LHS. Let's take the u plus v. Let's substitute u and v. And since just now we have, we have seen how to add both of the elements, first coordinate plus first coordinate, comma, second coordinate plus second coordinate. Now, since we have x1 plus x2, I can also, x1 and x2 both are real numbers. I can also write this down as x2 plus x1. Just like for example, if we have 2 plus 3, I can also write this down as 3 plus 2. Alright, why? Because they are real numbers that should be rearranged. It is not going to change my final answer. So in the similar way, x1 plus x2 can be changed as x2 plus x1. Similarly, in the second coordinate also, 3x2 plus 3x1. I have rearranged them. Right. Now, if you see this particular element, I am going to split them again and do that and separate the addition. So x2 first comma 3x2. This is my first element. In between, if you see the operation, we have addition here, both of them. So we have addition here plus the second element is x1 comma 3x1. Alright. Now what is x2 comma 3x2? This is our element v plus the operation as it is and this is u. So your commutative property is also satisfied here. Now move to the third property, associativity. What does the associativity property say? If I have two elements, u plus v plus w, u and v are w, I can rearrange these brackets, which means I can write this down as u plus u plus v plus w, which means I can rearrange the brackets. Let's check whether we can get it to this one u plus v plus w since u and v are in bracket let's substitute them u v and w all right 
in bracket i have u plus v so we'll add them just now we have seen their addition so this is our addition then we have the operation plus here and again the second element let's add them together we have x1 plus x2 all right first coordinate with the first coordinate that is why plus x3 comma first coordinate plus sorry second coordinate with the second coordinate plus v x3 all right equal to now what we are done just now i told you that x1 x2 x3 are all real numbers they can be rearranged so here also what we are doing x1 plus x2 plus x3 i can rearrange the brackets i can also write this down as x1 plus x2 plus x3 since they are real numbers all we are going to do is the addition it is not going to change my final answer so i can write down i can rearrange the brackets so if you see we have rearranged the brackets over here and similarly here also we have rearranged the brackets after rearranging the brackets what we are going to do we are going to separate the addition all right i have x1 here comma 3x1 so this is my first element under the operation addition so we'll write down plus here then next x2 plus x3 which is my second coordinate comma 3x2 plus 3x3 x1 plus x3 x1 is what u plus x2 and 3x2 is in bracket we get v plus w so this is also proven the associativity property is also proven the next is existence of identity in addition now we know that in additive identity we should have one element in such a way when it is added with any element of that particular set the addition should be result into that particular element itself so our additive identity element is what zero so zero when added with any element will always end up in what that particular element which is u itself so added additive identity is also satisfied next is existence of additive inverse just now i told you in the previous session if you remember additive inverse will be negation of that particular element so for every element u we have to find out the additive inverse additive inverse as a negation of that that is minus u that will always result into zero all right now we'll move to the next property which is sixth property the closure under multiplication closure under multiplication says that if we multiply any scalar with the element belonging to that particular set that multiplication should always belong to that particular set so i have p into the element x1 comma 3x1 p multiplied inside the bracket will give me px1 comma 3px1 p is real number x is real number so this will result into a scalar again we have 3 into that particular same element so this belongs to the set s so the closure property is satisfied here then next is existence of multiplicative identity for multiplicative identity just like additive identity we have to find out the multiplicative identity in such a way that particular element multiplied with that u will always result into u so your multiplicative identity is what 1 into u 1 multiplied with any particular element will always result into that particular element so that will always belong to s all right so our multiplicative identity is also satisfied next is associativity with respect to multiplication here if you observe what we have to do p into q u we have to prove that it is equal to p q in bracket and u which means we have to rearrange the bracket since p and q are scalars you have to always remember that let's do the multiplication first p will remain outside let's multiply this q inside bracket of u so this will be p will be as it is then we have q x1 comma q3 x1 all right now this p will also get multiply inside the bracket then we have p q x1 comma 3 p q x1 all right now what we are doing since p and q both are scalars so what we can do i am just putting a bracket over here because it is not going to change my equation so p and q in bracket similarly here also so since in both of them p and q are common so i am taking p q as common and we are left with x1 comma 3 x1 and that is p q into u so associativity with respect to multiplication is also satisfied here now we'll move to the ninth property which is distributive property of multiplicativity over addition 
all right here the property says that if we have any scalar multiplied with the addition of two elements this will end up in pu plus pv we have to check this one so let's substitute u and e, u and v here u is here and your p is this all right now, what we have to do we'll first add both of them and once we add them then we will multiply p inside when we are adding them we know since the addition of two of the elements will be first ele first coordinate into first coordinate x1 plus x2 comma second coordinate into second coordinate all right now let's multiply this p inside so that will be p the first coordinate is x1 plus x2 here again p second coordinate is 3x1 plus 3x2 equal to now if you observe what we are doing after multiplication is done we are trying to separate both of them under the operation of addition so px1 this is my first and the operation is addition comma 3px1 operation addition here bracket then the second element is px2 comma 3px2 all right and if you observe if you take p common we are left with pu plus pv so the distributive property of multiplication over addition is also satisfied similarly we can also prove the distributivity of addition over multiplication wherein we have to take two scalar that their addition multiplied with the element will always result into pu plus qu and that should also belong to that particular set similarly this property is also satisfied and hence if you observe all the 10 properties are being satisfied by our, by our set s and so we can say that s is the vector space with the, under the operation of addition and multiplication if if by any chance any one of the property fails to be satisfied we cannot consider that particular set as a vector space i hope this example is clear with you all done